actually update and go through the syllabus with you really quick so you can get pertinent information about this course. So this is 2404 Introduction to Human Anatomy and Physiology. My name is Heather Brazier. You can call me Dr. B. Um, here's my phone number for my office. Um, right now I'm kind of in between offices because we're going to the new building. So um, the best way to actually contact me is either email me through your D2L account or um, if it's an emergency, you can text me at 392-5787, of course, with the 409 in front of it. My office is on the second floor, room 216 CSI. If that door is open and you don't see me, just look across the, the room um, or across the hallway. And I might be in that room. My office is actually right now incomplete, so keep that in mind. Um, my office hours are Tuesdays and Wednesdays from 9 to 11 and Thursdays from 10 to 11. Of course, you can also get me a by appointment if you can't fit me into any of those times. I just ask um, you email me with three times. I'm not available on um, Tuesday, Wednesdays, or Thursdays from 11.15 to 2.15 because those are the times I teach. But any other time, you can give me... Um, you can email me, and unless I have something scheduled, I will meet with you. So, but like I said, just give me three times that I can pick from, and that makes it much easier. This is 2404, Introduction to Anatomy and Physiology, and this is considered a 96-hour course. So if you were taking this face-to-face, -face, three hours of it would be lecture, and three hours would be lab. So that's the amount of time you would spend in class, so that's six hours total. Then you would take stuff home, homework and studying or reading. So um, just keep that in mind as we go through this, that you would be spending just six hours of course time and then anything on top of that. Now, everything is online, so you aren't going to come see me unless you want to. Um, I will make so these appointment times. If you want to come, instead of coming to my office, you want to do it through um, online. We can do online times. That's not a problem at all. Um, you just email me and let me know. And this is spring 2018. Now, you can go onto our catalog to figure out what the course review is. And basically, it's a this is a general survey course, so it's going to cover um, all of anatomy and physiology. We will be going through the entire book. Um, there's this introductory course that goes over the whole book, just not as much detail as, say, regular AP 1 and 2. But we're still covering the entire course of AMP 1 and 2. It's just, it's not as in the level of detail that if you took the next course up. And this basically, sorry about that, uh, this right here is just giving you all the student learner outcomes. Now you will want to purchase Holes Essential of Human Anatomy and Physiology and you will need Connects and Learn Smart. So you can either buy this with the hardcover book in the bookstore you can buy it online as long as you make sure to get connects and learn smart. You can go through Amazon or half.com, halfpricebooks.com, whatever that is. Um, you can go and go straight to the publisher and get a quote as well. Just remember that um, you have to have the code. Now, if you go online to buy it, you can essentially just get the um, you can just get the code in the online book, which is cheaper. Um, or you can even rent the book if you want and then just get the code if you want something hardback and you don't want to spend as much money. Um, this kind of tells you how to get registered. And if you go on to the um, Connects, the My Course, there's a section in your D2L that will discuss or how to um, basically um, sign up for the course. Now, the attendance, um, we are not meeting face to face. But you're expected to log into the course at least two times each week. Um, and you should be participating in the, the course as well. And so it's the same kind of attendance policies as the traditional classroom, as in you would meet twice a week. Now, if you fail to log into DE2L or the Connect AMP, on top of the fact that you're failing to complete your work assignments, for instance, you just um, log in once in a week, but you complete all your homework 
that's also fine as well. It's just on average, people don't want to complete all of it in one sitting. So that's why I say you should do on average at least twice a week. Um, if you're logging in, but you're not completing your coursework, that also demonstrates poor progress towards obtaining the course goals and objectives, and it can be detrimental to learning the course material. So if that happens, I will administratively withdraw you from the course, but be aware that it's not going to be something you won't know about. I will email you through D2L first. So if you do not get an email from me, don't expect that I will just withdraw you. If it's the W day and you know you haven't been completing your work, but you have not gotten an email from me, that means I'm not going to withdraw you. You have to get an email from me. Tardy doesn't apply because you're doing it at home. So just keep that in mind and make sure you're logging in and doing your homework. So the assignments, um, your lecture exams, there's a total of five of them that will be given throughout the semester. Each exam is worth 80 points. And so the first one is going to cover stuff in unit one. The second one is going to cover stuff in unit two. The third, unit three. The fourth, unit four. And the, five, the fifth, unit five, right? Mastering homework, there will be 20 um, homework assignments for the semester, each worth 10 points. So if you realize that, that's 200 points, which means you can drop two of them. And these are due 11.59, the Sunday before this scheduled exam. Realize here, also, the lecture exam, the lowest exam will be dropped. So you can drop one exam, you can drop two of the um, homeworks. And then you're going to have le learn smart study modules. There will be 20 modules and they're each worth five points. These are you just do them and you get the grade. Up here, you're actually needing to um, work on them because they will um, reduce your grade if you get mistakes. Now in here, I'm just, I've highlighted them to let you know these homeworks go for exam one, these homeworks are exam two, so on and so forth. So here again, the Learn Smart Study Modules, you can drop two of those. So two homeworks, two study modules, one exam. Now the laboratory, each chapter will have a variety of lab activities. So you may have one, you may have up to five. So just realize there's a mix of what are known as Learn Smart Labs, interactive lab activities, and lab physio activities. Each week's lab, which can be a single or multiple chapters, are summed together to be worth 10 points. No lab grades will be dropped. So all of these are due 11.59 p.m. the Sunday before the scheduled lab practical. And lab practicals, there's two online, will be given throughout the semester. They cover material from the labs, and each practical is worth 55 points. And you can find both of these on the McGraw-Hill Connect site. And then, of course, the final exam will cover all the material in the lecture and the assigned reading for the semester. So the final exam includes all the lecture stuff, not the lab stuff. So you're given ample time to complete the homework and the exam, it's just not one day, like if you were taking it face-to-face. Um, -face. So there aren't any makeups. For instance, um, a, a couple of the exams are going to be due this week. You have about um, to Chapter 8 finished as of right now. Um, I'm going to generate the, the first exam um, by the end of next week. So um, some of them will be there uh, a couple weeks early for you to be able to take and you can get ahead if you like to it's not a problem and the same is um, said for the final exam now if there's something crazy that puts you out of commission for over a week um, that's something that we can discuss and you would just need to give me um, verification email me and we can talk about how that could be um, rectified if you miss the exam and you've been out of commission for over a week but for the most part, you'll have several days to do this exam, so there's no reason. So with that being said, don't wait to the last minute. If something bad happens the last minute, I'm not going to reopen the exam for you because you have several days. Um, so you should try to take it towards the beginning of the week versus always waiting to the last minute. 
And so here, if you have any problems with me personally that uh, you can't rectify, you can contact um, Martha Donnelly. Chris Allen is just going to refer you to Martha Donnelly because the dean is actually my direct supervisor. The department chair is not. So um, you can email or contact her here. With that being said, I always ask that you contact me first if there's an issue. That way we can try to rectify it between um, yourself and me. The reason being is if you email um, Professor Donnelly, she's going to still come to me and she's still going to ask me, okay, this student came to me with this. What's your story? And we're going to have to try to figure out how to, to fix it anyway. So uh, before it gets to that point, let's try to see what we can do. Um, if whatever we decide you're not happy with, then, you know, by all means, contact for, um, Professor Donnelly and talk to her um, and, you know, we can see what happens there. But um, most of the time what I've realized is that problems that you arise, um, a large percent of the time is miscommunication. So that's why I always ask, um, contact me, let's have a sit down, we can discuss what the problem is, and we can see if we can figure out a way to, to fix it so that we both are happy. So how do you determine your grade? Of course, we have five exams, but you can drop one. So there's four exams. They're each worth 80 points, and that's 32% of your grade. There are 18 homework assignments that all count. Remember, you can drop two of those, each worth 10. That's 18%. The Learn Smart study modules, those are essentially you just do them. There's 20 of them, but um, you can drop two. So I'm going to count 18. The lab activities, there's 15 weekly activities, and each is going to be worth 10 points. So that's 15% of your grade. There's two lab practicals, each worth 55. That's 11%. And your comprehensive final for the lab lecture component, not the lab, but lecture, is 15% of the grade. So that comes up to 100. Now, how I calculate your grade is not through percentages, but actual points. So there's a thousand points. And so for you to earn an A is between um, 900 and 1,000. Bs are 800 through 899.99. Cs are 700 through 799.99, and so on and so forth. I do not give grades. I just assign them. I assign their grades based on the assessments that you've completed, and they're not ambiguous at all. They're pretty straightforward. So you essentially get the grade that you earn. Don't expect me to curve it. Don't expect me to round up. There are a few cases throughout the semester that I give a few points of extra credit. So that, with that being said, it alleviates any of the fact that I need to round up. If you do the extra credit, um, it's going to be more than half a point worth of extra credit. So I would rather give extra five or ten points for the semester versus rounding up, up half. So keep that in mind as you go through the semester. And that your final grade is going to reflect the entire semester, not the first couple weeks or the last couple weeks or somewhere in the middle, but the whole semester. So make sure that you are getting the grade. Make sure that you're doing um, work to get the grade that you want. Um, the official W day is towards the end of the semester and in the um, tentative syllabus. I'll talk about that. Um, if you don't want a grade, then make sure to withdraw before the W day. Instructor approval is necessary if you want to withdraw after the official day. <coughs> um, that's very unlikely to happen unless there's some kind of an emergency. So if you do not want um, a bad grade or you do not want a final grade to be recorded, make sure to withdraw before the W day. No credit will be awarded for the course earning a W. If you stop attending, you must withdraw at the registrar's office provide prior to the W. If you stop attending class and do not officially withdraw, you will receive an F of your course. That is, unless, of course, I email you and tell you that I'm going to withdraw you for lack of academic progress. Six drop rule. Um, if a student drops more than six courses, including courses that are transfer, students have previously dropped at other Texas public institutions. Um, each student, you essentially will then be responsible for paying for things like out-of-state tuition. So make sure that you are being very cognizant of what classes you're dropping and what not to. Um, there is tutoring, there is the science hotspot right now. 
It's in the regular building. It's on the sixth floor. In um, in building 12. It's going to move to the new Science and Innovation Center, CSI. So um, just, you can email me or you can stop by either um, place to find out where that location is, or you can call them for hours and locations as well. Counseling service, this is the number that you can contact or go to Suite 260, Building 13, if you need counseling, career, or disability services. If you need assistance in various technologies to be converted to text-to-speech, magnify items, or convert text to Braille, you can go to the Assistant Technology Lab in um, Building 12 on the 8th floor. The Writing Lab will help with any of your writing skill needs. The library is on the top floor and it can help you um, find books or contains information and resources both to help you be a better college student, community member, and to help you in this class. You can email for a reference library if you need any help. I'm really big on academic integrity. Um, my idea about integrity in general is that people can take everything away from you. The only thing they can't take from you though is your behavior and what you will do and whether you are honest and you add, um, act with integrity. So um, make sure to produce your own work, give appropriate credit to others, don't um, plagiarize, make sure if you do not know how to annotate um, someone else's work that you get help with that, the Writing Center can help you, or you can email me and I can um, provide links on how to do that. Um, if you're going to take a test, use your own mind and not anything off the internet or somebody else. If um, you're basically convicted of academic dishonesty, there are harsh consequences, and this is at any academic institution. So be careful. Um, you can have additional class requirements imposed. You can receive a zero or an F on an exam or assignment. You can actually receive an F for the whole course. So you can do something as a little as cheat on a discussion that's worth five points out of a thousand point class and make an F in it depending on how the instructor feels about this dishonesty that has been created. You can be withdrawn from the course or the program. You can even be expelled from the college and it can be annotated on your um, your transcript. So make sure that you are doing your own work. If you're a 504, if you have any issues, disability services that you need, please contact the um, Office of Disability Services and um, just email me your um, accommodation form and we can discuss um, what kind of accommodations that I need to follow through with. Um, security and safety is pivotal for our campus so you can go to this website to learn details about that and you can use this website to receive emergency notifications. If you have any kind of emergencies, just contact the police at 5911. Um, make sure to protect your computer and your files. There are computer viruses, it's a fact of life. So using flash drives on more than one computer creates a possibility of infecting additional computers. And so make sure um, that you're being proactive with this. We can't, we try really hard to make sure there aren't viruses on our computers on campus, but we can't guarantee it because we have so many students using them and flash drives going back and forth and people opening websites that may not be the most upstanding. What I mean by that is you're doing research on a paper and then you go to, you know, Joe Smith's um, biology page and you think it's a, a credible biology page but it's not right and so you can um, essentially infect flash drives or your computer to these viruses so uh, make sure that you always have some kind of backup to that we are an equal opportunity employer and a mission and educational institution so we do not um discriminate based on race, color, creed, national origin, gender, age, veteran status, sexual orientation, or disability. Um, we do not allow any form of harassment, so if you feel like you are in a unsafe environment, 
please either talk to me or somebody else at Lone Star College Counseling or um, any of that or the police department and we can help where we can. FERPA is basically the same um, as looking at HIPAA and the idea that we are not going to provide any information to anybody else outside of you about your academic endeavor. You can fill out this form and have that on file so somebody else, but even if you have that on file and you um, email me, I'm still going to say, no, I can't talk to you. And then you can talk to somebody in, um, in the um, advising or in um, admissions to get this put through. But for me, it's easier for me just to not answer any information on a student to anybody but the student that is registered in my class. So keep that in mind. Um, LS, LSCSUP provides you an email address. So I would suggest any emails that you give to um, me or you use that you use through the um, LSCS um, website. It makes it more effective for exchanging information. If you email me from a Gmail or a Yahoo or um, any of those others, the problem is, is that they're going to tag them as spam. And I can't always promise that I'm going to see you in my spam folder. So that's another reason why I ask you just to contact me through D2L, not through email. Because I get so many emails from everybody, but if it can go into the spam folder and then I won't be able to see you. So keep that in mind. And at the end of the semester, I really appreciate you if you evaluate me. Um, you're going to have the chance to evaluate me through the course or you're my Lone Star, and you're going to have a chance to evaluate me through Rate a Professor. Now, the thing with both of these is I always ask, please evaluate me, but I also ask you to be productive in your evaluations. I don't really care if you like me. That's never been my overwhelming need as an instructor. My overwhelming need as an instructor is to make sure you learn biology, but more so that you become a stronger student. That way, when you leave Lone Star College, University Park, you can go on to the next step. And if you go to Texas A&M, UT, University of Houston, um, any of those large schools, that you're not going to spend five or six thousand dollars get there and not have the work ethic and the study skills needed to be successful at those institutions. So um, the things that I do, there are always a purpose for them. So I don't make you do anything that there's no purpose or overwhelming um, need for. With that being said, um, the course is going to be tough. It's supposed to. It's an anatomy and physiology course. Um, it's easier than the, the normal anatomy and physiology, but easier doesn't mean easy. So you're going to be doing a lot of work and you're going to have to put a lot of time and effort into this course. With that being said, I'm always going to be available for you. Um, I'm not perfect and DTOL is not perfect. So there, I can't promise that there's not going to be any hitches there. But what I can give you is the fact that if you contact me, I'm going to basically talk back with you and try to figure out what's wrong. If it's something to do with the Connect site, um, I'm going to look to see if there's anything weird happening on my side. If there's nothing weird happening on my side, then I'm going to ask you to contact the um, book publisher and see if there's any issue there. And if they don't find any issue or they say there's a problem here, then, um, then they can go back fixing it. I can't help with any issues that with the book publisher that are on your end because it's, it's a problem that you're having with your account to them and they're not going to share stuff with me. So make sure that you contact them, but also let me know what's going on so that I can try to fix anything that's a problem. But with that being said, when you evaluate me, you can tell me things that you don't like, that that's perfectly fine or that you felt weren't helpful to you. At the same point, I always ask people to give me a suggestion on how to fix it or what would be helpful. 
Um, complaining that something is terrible but not giving any good input on how to fix the terrible thing does absolutely no good to me. So I'm very interested in that. At the same point, if there's something you really, really liked about the class, please put that in there and say, gosh, I really enjoyed the fact you did this. Please keep it. Because if I don't have enough people saying that they like things or I don't see that they may be useful, I may take them away. Um, so I want to make sure that things that are really good about the course remain. And I want to make sure that things that aren't as good get fixed. But a thing that won't get fixed is the class is too hard. It's supposed to be hard. Unfortunately, science classes just can be a bit tough sometimes. So this is a tentative schedule. As you see, tentative. It could change. I mean, um, if there's a problem, like the college closes down or something of that nature, or there's something wrong with D2L, or if there's something wrong with um, the Connect site, we may change. But for the most part, you can expect these activities to remain. And so what I have here is it's divided into lecture and laboratory. And so we had the holiday January 5th. We had closures the 16th and 17th, but we still have a part of the course. So you're going to go through the intro to the course in chapter one. It's a pretty easy week. And then for chapter one, you're going to do week one activity. So week one activity you can find in chapter one, right? So this is going to be the 10 points, and then essentially you'll have this. And then next week you're going to go through chapter twos and threes, and then you're going to do week two activities, which you can find in chapter twos and three on the Connect site. And then, of course, on January, these are the weeks, right? So the week of January 9th, you're going to do chapters four and five, which is cellular metabolism and tissue. And you can find week three activities in chapters four and five. Now, all of this chapter stuff is going to be due the Sunday before the exam. So February 4th, because the February 5th should be that Monday at 11.59. So all of this stuff for the chapters, chapter two, three, four, five, and one, your um, the modules will be due and the homework will be due. Now, I suggest on here, and I give you the due dates, that suggest that you finish these at the same time you're doing these, just so that you can keep up. Technically, though, all these lab activities aren't due until the lab practical one. But if you do them in the week that you are essentially being assigned them versus trying to get them all done right before the lab practical, you're going to have time for your um, memory to kind of integrate it into um, your long-term memory. So then you'll just have to study down here. So that's how it's going to work. Of course, spring break, there's nothing assigned. But if you look, you can um, essentially um, finish any of this, right? You're going to have um, chapters 9, 10, and 11 do. So you can do those throughout spring break if you want. And then get ready for the exam because this is all going to be due right before um March 18th, right? And you can get started, if they're there, you can get started with stuff early too. I have no problem with that. So you're going to be off March 12th through 19th, and then you're going to have your spring holiday March 30th through April 1st, and then your W day is April 6th. And your comprehensive final is on May 7th. So this essentially gives you an overview of your syllabus, and I hope that helps.